now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Kim, who's a principal product designer here at Dropbox. Uh, she's a former design leader at companies like Cover and Etsy and New York Times. And I think her side hustle might be baking, so maybe ask her about that later. So uh, please uh, join me and give you a big round of applause and welcome up, Kim. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, side hustle is baking and also wine tasting. So if you ever want to get down and talk about fermented grapes, I'm around. Um, yeah, so I'm Kim. I'm a principal product designer at Dropbox. Uh, I am a lead on the pr uh, premium revenue opportunities team, also known as the props team for short, because that's a mouthful. I'll tell you what that's all about in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to talk about the team. Uh, first off, um, you can see there's an open pink dot. We are hiring a product manager, so just a slight plug. If you or your friend uh, is into what I'm talking about tonight, definitely hit me up. Uh, but we're a very small team and very cross-functional team by design. So in addition to engineering, product, and design, we also have um, product analytics, design research, product marketing, uh, customer experience, and all of these inputs are really, really important because our goal is essentially to make money. We are <laughs> developing new re revenue generating products for Dropbox and uh, primarily focusing on people, small teams, individuals who use Dropbox for work. And a part of our mission is to do that really, really quickly. So we want to be able to identify uh, new ideas, evaluate them, and make a recommendation on whether to invest in them or not within a quarter. And so I spend a lot of my time thinking about like lessons that I've learned here, lessons that I've learned throughout my career, about like how do we move fast and how can we ensure that we're able to deliver business impact. And something that comes to mind, and I don't think that we talk about this enough, is that failure is more common than success. Um, I see a lot of heads nodding in the room, and what that tells me is that you've probably worked on projects that didn't you know, meet that lofty like sign-up goal or that lofty, lofty engagement goal. And that's OK, right? Like That's a part of our practice. But um, you know, having business impact is something that's really, really hard to do. And it's great that Enrique is putting, you know, putting out frameworks and programs to get designers to even think about this in the first place. And the next question is like, OK, now how in the hell do we do that, right? So I want to talk about some common mistakes uh, that you know, we make and that we've definitely learned from on my team around goal setting and evaluation and you know, how to do better in those areas. So uh, first mistake, uh, there are no benchmarks for success, particularly in my area when you're developing new products, uh, it can be really challenging to have benchmarks because you have no existing behavior, uh, no existing product to benchmark against. And the problem with that is, you know, you can blindly go into the product development process, blindly prototype, blindly experiment, blindly survey, without really knowing what you're looking for, without really knowing what a good outcome is. And if you don't know what you're looking for, like even worse, it leaves your team to guessing, right? Like guessing whether you've succeeded or failed. And it goes without saying that that is not going to deliver impact for your company. Uh, so here's an example. Um, this is from a recent survey that we ran around a new concept. But we got a finding back like this. 59% of participants indicated that they would be likely to use this tool. And so at first glance, you might be thinking, oh, 59%, that's pretty good. That's almost 60%. That's more than half. But it's easy to kind of kid yourself because, again, we hadn't really clarified what good was. We hadn't really clarified what success was, what would be impactful for the business. So we actually re-ran the survey and started to benchmark um, against products that people love, uh, that our customers love and use at Dropbox, like SmartSync. Um, and also against products that we've released that haven't had the impact that we wanted them to have. And it's not perfect, but it starts to give us an objective baseline of you know, what success is and what, um, what failure is. So it, and it helps us track like, key performance indicators around believability, comprehension, like value, fit, need. 
And it also helps us understand like how that new idea sizes up. So if it's not performing as well in terms of value or need, then we know that we need to go back to the drawing board and rethink the concept. So here's another example, uh, just a usage metric from a prototype, 20% of users comment on a file. Uh, but you know that metric alone, again, it doesn't tell us about impact. It doesn't tell us if 20% is you know, good enough to deliver meaningful impact to the business. So something else that we've been thinking about, and we do this a lot for early stage prototypes, is again, like setting that benchmark in place ahead of time around what is the, the type of metric, the type of behavior that will be indicative of volume and impact. And particularly in a prototype scale, when you're working with like, you know, dozens or hundreds of users, like what is that number and how will that translate to uh, real usage with hundreds of thousands of users? So thinking about that again, rather than just a usage metric, uh, something that the PM on the team, Marley Spector, came up with was a closed loop metric. So meaning that a comment is both posted and read. And so that helps us get a sense of the viability of the product, the health of the ecosystem, and also, again, of the volume that's needed for impact at scale. OK, mistake number two, um, your data is inaccurate. Uh, I smile when I say this because, unfortunately, this happens a lot. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the reason this happens is because getting good data is really hard, especially, again, especially with new products, especially with small-scale products. Um, it takes time, it takes people, it takes resources, it takes rigor, and it can be really tempting to ease up your standards and, you know, let your data quality slide. Let's just say, oh, we're just looking for directional input. We don't really care if it's statistically significant. Um, but the thing is, uh, you know, if you, I've never seen this go any other way. If you have crappy data, you're not going to have good results, point blank. And the good news is, though, like if you, um, you can be fast and lean and also maintain rigor. So starting with cheap and lean methods and working towards diligence as you go. So the way that we think about this on our team Again, like building something like a technical prototype would allow us to understand uh, the likelihood of, of business impact with a high degree of certainty, but it's also a really like expensive investment to make. So we tend to start on the cheaper side of things, and even though the signal isn't as strong, we can uh, learn about the market opportunity, we can learn about the fit, the user value, and that sort of stuff. And this is what it ends up looking like in our process. So again, what matters is that we're making informed decisions along the way, we're starting with lean techniques, and we're dialing up the rigor as we continue to invest in the product. Okay, so another example of uh, you know trying to push for good data. So stick with me here. I know I have a word equation on the screen and I've gotten some feedback from designers on my team that this is a little confusing, but I promise it's worth it, it pays off. So this is a like typical or kind of like oversimplified way of estimating impact, right? Like on my team, we're trying to build revenue generating products and part of that is projecting the type of impact that they're gonna have. And so a method of doing that is looking at the number of potential users that you might reach by the likelihood of them actually uh, adopting or using the product or willing to pay for it. But the problem is it's industry standard to really like make this calculation based on assumptions, to make this calculation based on market norms or competitor norms. And you know, while that's an okay starting place, you end up having a very optimistic, to say the least, uh, estimate up front. So like millions and millions of dollars and millions and millions of users. And it ends up being this kind of metric that's almost impossible to achieve. So yeah, if a projection is based mostly on assumptions, then you're less likely to hit it. You're less likely to be able to hold that number up. So the way that we've been thinking about it is how can we be more realistic about these projections? Um, so we've started working with a projection range rather than having a single number. And the way that that breaks down, and so this is the same equation that you saw before, but rather than having one projection, we have three. We have an optimistic range, a mid-range, and a conservative range. 
And so the optimistic range is where you're, you're allowed to bring in those assumptions that you typically would, but the mid-range and the conservative range are really pushing on you to be more realistic, to not bring in any estimates or assumptions. And when you start thinking about your target audience or potential customers, again, the optimistic range is super optimistic. It's like anyone, total addressable market, anyone that is a potential customer of this product, we're gonna consider into this estimate. But as you get more conservative, you start thinking about people who are really your likely customers in a more targeted cohort. And finally, when you're thinking against that adoption metric, uh, in the conservative estimate, you're only bringing in um, data points that you have a high degree of certainty in. So I have some examples here, like if you were running a survey, uh, in your conservative estimate, you would only include like definitely responses versus in the optimistic estimate, you would include like, mm, maybe, I might use that product. And so what's really great about this um, is it allows you know, that industry convention of like bringing in some assumptions, but it also allows and like helps your team to have a no frills conversation about impact. So if you're like really talking about a product that's in the one to $5 million range, you might make a different decision than if you were talking about the more optimistic estimate that's in the $15 million range. Are you still with me? Yeah, okay, I'm getting super nerdy here. Uh, but I think, in case I lost you, <laughs> uh, this artist Craig Damrauer, he sums it up really well. Uh, you can avoid disappointment by trying to anchor as much to reality as possible. Okay, final mistake, I'm gonna take us home. Uh, not final mistake ever, but final mistake I'm talking about tonight. Uh, so hypotheses go unchallenged. Um, this is really a symptom of the mistake, but you know, if your solution at the end of the process looks the same as it was in the beginning, then it's a good indicator that you haven't calibrated towards your customer's needs, right? You haven't really evaluated your assumptions and challenged your hypothesis. And that is less likely to lead to impact. So it's a really simple solution, but it's a thing that teams often overlook uh, listing your hypotheses, your business goals, your user goals, and evaluating them at every step. Like, you know, every prototype, every survey, every research technique that you go through, coming back to these things and seeing how they're holding up and making adjustments. And so this is an example from a designer on the team, Melody Quintana. I had to blur some stuff out because I, I know you signed an NDA to get in here, but I, people are live streaming. I can't really share this information with you. But I think you'll get the gist. So she's logging the design assumptions that her team is making and also the level of confidence that we've had in them based on the evaluation that we've done so far. So you know, as we start to evaluate things, learn more about them, prove them to be true, they can move into the high confidence bucket and things that we don't have confidence in, we know that we need to do further research and evaluation with. Finally, this is like, my, I don't know, my nitpick, my main point, if you're on my team, you've heard me say this before, uh, evaluate, don't validate. We in the industry, did I hear a yes out there? Yeah, yeah, girl. Um, we in the industry have a bad habit of saying we're gonna validate things. Like I'm gonna validate that you know users will use this product in this way, we're gonna validate that we'll have X, Y, and Z impact. And the problem is you're kind of like setting yourself up for failure because what you're saying essentially is like if you invalidate that you're unsuccessful. And in reality, part of the product development process is evaluating hypotheses, val validating them and invalidating them. Like, you know, learning that they're not true and learning from them and changing. And so by simply saying evaluate, which is correct, we evaluate experiments, it's scientific, we don't validate them. Uh, by simply saying evaluate, then that starts to change the mindset for yourself and for your team and like starts to create this environment where um, invalidating things and failure is okay and you learn from them. All right, so why does all of this matter? Enrique set me up pretty well talking about like design being accountable for business impact. But also I often hear designers talk a lot about wanting to lead projects, set direction, and you know, if you want to take, it, take on that type of role, then you also need to be accountable and contribute to the outcomes and be able to drive that. 
Um, also, your ability to direction set and lead and bring a vision to your team really starts with being able to set good goals. So hopefully uh, those tips, these tips that I shared with you were helpful and will help you set good goals and set direction for your team and deliver business impact.